Hello and welcome links here. We are playing more of Sakura Forest Girls. Let's just get to it, right? We've met a merchant. I guess we did accept that trade. And now... With Ayana we said farewell to Mika, the merchant. And continue on our journey to find the witch. Speaking of witches... I like Sakura games witches. They always have really nice designs. While we walk the grass shitting underfoot, I glance at Ayana with some curiosity. She has her new trinket looped about her neck. I mean, it's the correct place, but also... Would I be wearing something so expensive? No. I would probably... no. Especially not in Poland. <laughs> anyway, its thick golden chain shimmers in the sunlight. The red ruby which hangs from the chain is large, like a quail sack. It is too... Uh, sorry. It's too bordered with gold. It's quite the gaudy piece. It clashes with Ayana's clothes, which are so unassuming. When I think of Ayana, I don't really think of jewels. There's a bit of dissonance between the pair. I mean, I think you did say her eyes are like jewels for so... Or maybe it was Mika. I don't remember. Check, check it out, guys. Check it out in the previous episode. I wonder why she wanted it so much. It's not there. Oi, did she lose it already? <laughs> So what do you think of the necklace? <laughs> Let me see. Anna ponders her fingers toying with its heavy chain. It is very pretty, but I think it might be a bit too pretty. I am too plain to wear such a piece. And I think the length of the hair is also the same. Hmm. I might be nursing similar thoughts myself, but hearing such sensors coming from Anna's lips makes me pause. How dare you! <laughs> How should I reply to that? Reassure her. Agree with her. Uh, a bit too pretty. I'm much too plain. What are you talking? You are not plain at all. What are you talking about, woman? Boom. I don't think you're plain, Ayana. You don't? Of course! Come on. White hair rule. Not in real life. Animal characters for? Hell yeah. John Alter. Hell yeah. Anyway. No, not one bit. You're a. Whoa, I hit the mic, sorry. Not one bit. You're very pretty yourself with your smooth skin and your blue eyes, which are purple like sapphires. Come on, this is purple. <laughs> How is this blue? It's purple. <laughs> anyway. You're just not very... Oh, how do I put it? Show your fee about it? Even I'm not ostentatious. Yeah, I would never use the word because... I wouldn't remember it. Exactly. Trust Ayana to know a long word like that. I mean, I know it. I would never use it for. I have to grope for vo vocabulary while she can pull neat turns of phrase from the air as simply as picking flowers. I mean, to be fair, I'm the same in that aspect. Like, I don't remember those... I would say kind of heavy words. Or more like words that are not used normally in your language very often. Like, barely ever? I don't know them. That's true. I mean, I might know them. Like, I don't... I, I do know ostentatious. I just don't hear it anywhere. So, you know... I don't hear it being used, so I don't use it as well. That's how it goes. And it's... Uh, it's actually probably... With a lot of words like that. Even in my own language. Anyway. 
I guess when you speak, as Luciana does, you have to learn how to be concise. It makes it easier to get your point across. You don't wear fancy clothes, and you don't drape yourself in gold or travels. You don't like to stand out. I think that's why the necklace looks a bit strange on you. It's absolutely not because you're not pretty, cause you are! I guarantee it! Yes, you have... You have basically y Yaya's guaranteed. And a stamp. Thank you. That is very nice of you. But I'm not sure if I can wear this so brazenly. It is much too extravagant. <laughs> it is with an awkward giggle that Ayana tucks her newly procured treasure beneath her shirt. Out of sight and out of mind. Wait, is it not how you normally do it? I mean, I have like a cheap necklace and I always hide it underneath the shirt. I mean, so sure, sometimes I forget, but... Uh, but yeah. The necklace is so chunky I can see its outline through the clothes, but its golden luster is now concealed. Anna looks much like her usual self again. The familiarity is reassuring, but it seems like a waste. Eh. Why do you buy it if you didn't want to show it off? It's strange. Anna's brow furrows. Hmm. I know my actions may seem counterintuitive, and perhaps they are, but I was not drawn to the necklace solely because of its appearance. Beautiful for it is. I think there is more to it than it seems. Like what? Ooh, some, you know, shaman family instincts tingling. It's hard to explain, but this necklace, it has a curious aura about it. I do not think it is an ordinary trinket. I think it might be enchanted. <gasps> so it has magic powers. Ayana nods. My parents are shamans. Magic runs in our blood. I am sensitive to it. I can feel the spirits shift in the air, for I cannot see them. And enchanted objects seem to seek me out. They sing to me in the breeze like sirens. This necklace is the same. I can feel it humming. Can't you? I press one hand to Aina's collarbone. Okay. Above her concealed necklace. But I can feel a thing. I don't have an epiphany or any newfound understanding. I feel just as bemused as I did before, if not more. Sorry, Ayana. I'm no good with magic stuff. I can't detect it. I thought as much. Ayana smiled gently. That is no failing on your part. Do not be discouraged. Very few people can set magic. It gets watered down through the generations. My parents are more attuned to the Arab's mana than I am, as were my grandparents before them, and my great-grandparents before them. Passing on magic through a family line is like pouring water into a series of dishes, each one a little more worn than the last. And wait, isn't that just because, you know, someone who is super accustomed to magic uh, created a family with someone who was not accustomed to magic and it would, you know, Generation by generation dry out. Makes sense. Makes sense, I think. The water escapes and soon there is only a trickle left. I can't perform magic myself. I can see the spirits only as outlines and my prophetic dreams are faint and hazy. It's still a lot. I can sense power emanating from this necklace but it's very vague. I can't tell when it was enchanted, or by whom, or whether it means to do as good or ill. That sucks. <laughs> it's all very mysterious to me. Maybe the witch can help us with that. When we get there. But I know deep down, I meant to have this necklace. It would not have called to me otherwise. It wants me to have it. I don't know when or how, but I think it will come in handy one day. Huh. Things are getting interesting about that. 
I digest this information slowly as a rabbit chews upon dandelion leaves. It's rare to hear Ayana talk so much, and she's explaining some pretty difficult concepts. It's hard for me to get my head around this all, being so ignorant in the ways of magic. Hmm, I don't think you're ignorant. I mean, you're just not in magical family. Your, fam your family were, uh, were, you know, specializing in hunting, so... Yeah. I don't really get what she's saying, but to summarize... So this necklace has special powers, and for you don't know what they are, you want to cling to it just in case. Yes, that's what she said. That's about the gist of it, yeah. Alright, I understand. I'll take care of you and your new necklace. I won't let anybody steal it! Thank you, that is most appreciated. Anna smiles gratefully. We must take good care of it. If we do not, who knows what disasters might ensue. <laughs> Anna squeaks her eyes wide as her right foot slides out from beneath her. She stumbles but my reflexes are fast and I'm able to catch her just in time. <gasps> nice! Save! Oi. How in the world is this... What would you call it? Hair decoration? At the end of the ponytail, right? Almost at the end. There is like... The white stuff. Is it also hair decoration or is it some stuff flying in the air? I think this is her decoration, right? You know what I mean? Because, like, there is uh, the black tie and over it, kind of, the white. Is this her decoration or is it really stuff in the... Ah, uh, whatever. Safe! I wind one arm about Ayana's slender back, while bringing our bodies close together. Her chest presses against my own. And she looks up at me in flustered surprise. F f thank you. It's no problem. What are friends for? I grin at Ayana, feeling smugly self confident in my suave rescue attempt. So, what were you saying about being careful? Uh. Ayana's face, which was already pink, turns pinker still at my needling. The gl she, she glanced away, pouting. Whew. I meant what I said. We should be careful. I just stumbled over a children while we were walking. <clears throat> it was bad timing on my part. I must look so silly. Just a little bit, but it's alright. I'm not going to judge you. I think you're cute as a matter of fact. I don't know if clumsiness counts as cuteness, but... Anna swallows, then glances back at me. Her pay eyelashes tremulous. You really are a good friend, Yaya. I appreciate it a lot. I know what I would do without you. One hour later. We continue our walk. <sighs> you okay, Ayana? Yeah, yeah, I... <sighs> I'm fine. You sure? We can take a break if you want. No, it's fine. We're almost there. Alright, suit yourself. I don't mind stopping for or giving you a piggyback. Wouldn't it be too heavy? Nah, I'm sure it'll be as light as a feather. Smooth. I offer now what I hope is a consoling green and she smiles faintly in response. We've been walking uphill for what seems like a small eternity, for in actuality I don't think it's been all that long. We finally made it to the base of the cliff upon which the witch sits, but now we have to tra uh, travel its twisting, turning trail. The cliff is steeper than I thought it was, and even I'm getting worn down by all this exercise. My heart stomping fit to burst, and my forehead's all damp with sweat. 
I feel exhausted and I've had years worth of training, thanks to my parents. Huh. It's it tr it's true for like the TP walks, they are a bit exhausting. If you've been with me from the first episode, you'd know that I've been on the delegation at work, right? And on Friday it was work and then the meeting right afterwards, like private privately already, right? Of the of my team. So we drank a little bit. And the next day I was like, hmm, there is still some time before I have to get out from the hotel room, right? Let's go on a walk. And it was steepy. Dude, you don't want to go on a steepy walks after drinking the night before. Even if you are alright, but you don't want to. <laughs> anyway. Mm. Yeah. Anna, by contrast, knows little of hunting. She spent most of her childhood inside her tent, mixing potions with her parents and burning incense to tap into the herbs Maria of Mana. And later, to be fair, I had to still, like, get the car to the closest parking. And leave it there. And I walked some more, just in case, you know. I, w I feel like I... It wouldn't be, maybe, maybe it wouldn't be a good idea yet to go on a longer drive, basically. And the parking lot basically was uh, freaking next door, so. You could basically more or less drive from parking of the hotel to that bigger parking, which was great. Anyway. Ayana, by contrast, knows little of hunting. She spent most of her, most of her childhood in her, her tent. Yeah, we know that. Mixing potions for her parents and burning incense to tap into the herbs Maria Mana. Whatever that is. <laughs> Ayana has told me about Mana a few times, but her explanations wash me off. Wash off me. Wash me off kind of does make sense, yeah. Wash off me. Like water from a duck's back. Speaking of water, I'm drenched. My skin is all sweaty and my clothes are sticking to me. The sun up head is bright and pitiless, and it beats up on my scalp so it tingles. I'm afraid Anna might fall again. But she's not complained since we started our ascent. She hasn't said a single word to me. In fact, her teeth are gritted and her eyes are narrowed with concentration. She must be feeling even more rotten than I am, but she refuses to slow down. She's doing her best, so I feel obliged to try even harder. <clears throat> Let's keep on going! Go team! I cheer enthusiastically and patch my fist in the air. Actually did the same thing right now. I now smiles at this performance fine and pauses to brush a few strands of ivory hair behind her ear. Hey, thank you, Yaya. Yeah, yeah. Why are you thanking me? For always supporting me. If I was my own, I might have given up by now. But the climb doesn't feel half so onerous when you're with me. You keep me strong. Still quite the challenge for... <sighs> for maybe it's been... <laughs> Whatever. Well, you know what they say. Things that are worth doing are always the hardest. That is true. That is so true. Yeah, yeah you are so right about that. The things that are worth it are truly the biggest challenges. Just think of satisfaction we'll get when we make it all the way to the top of the cliff. I bet the view will be really nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it will. Ayana smiles at me bashfully. But it will be even nicer with you. Smooth. Shyly, Ayana takes my hand in her own, then gives it a squeeze. <gasps> I don't expect this, and it brings a blush to my cheeks. My palms are all sweaty, and I feel a bit self-conscious as Ayana clings to me. But then again, Ayana's sweaty too. I guess my rumpled shell state does matter all that much. That's what common sense dictates, but it doesn't stop me from feeling self-conscious. Are you... alright with holding my hand? I wouldn't do it. 
if I did not want to. <laughs> Unless you don't want to. Of course I don't mind. In, in fact, uh, I like it. It's uh, comforting. I feel the same way. Being with you always cheers me up. Man, it's always the best when, like, the outgoing person, right, gets completely uh, ashamed, basically, and blushes and so on, doesn't know what to do. It's awesome. Anyway, when I'm with you, I feel like I, I can do anything. Same here. I grin. <laughs> I guess that's because we're such good friends, huh? The best of friends. I now squeeze my hand and with my chest my heart squeezes too. <gasps> I appreciate the sentiment but... Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't hold my hand when you're so sweaty. <laughs> I won't. I, I, dude, I mean, let's go. Boop. It might be nice if maybe... Just maybe! We could be more than friends. Yeah. I don't know what that would entail exactly, but... When I look at Anna, I'm struck by how cute she is. I really do like her. And half an hour later. Which makes it... One and a half hour? Since initial start? Holy crap. Finally! I can't believe it! The clip has finally been defeated, and I have reached its peak, bringing our Ordu's climb to a close. I hold one hand to my face, shielding my eyes from the glaring sunlight, and tip my head back. The sky both, no longer feathered by trees, has never looked bluer. It's so pure, almost completely devoid of clouds, that it reminds me of a lake. A gentle breeze cuts my hair, making it flutter. Yes, it that thing over there was for her. I still don't know how it's attached for. <laughs> this is amazing! Because it looks like only a tiny piece. Wait, could it be that one piece is attached to the black a uh, hair tie that is in the middle, right? And the rest just f kind of flutters around? Hmm... I'm not sure, maybe. It's amazing! Also ribbon, I'm into ribbons, I like ribbons. I smile, please, despite the sheen of perspiration which clings to my forehead. We're up so high! I can see for miles around. The tops of the trees are so small, like pico pieces. And look over there. I point my hair fluttering behind me in the breeze. I can see the village we came from. It's so tiny, like a village for ants. I smile at Ayana, my arms slinged behind my back. What do you think, partner? Are you pleased? Excited? Ecstatic? Probably tired. <laughs> I... <sighs> well... Not saying much, huh? I poke her cheek with my index finger. Ding! Cat got your tongue? No, um, it... <sighs> and I still trying to gather her breath after her climb. She breathes in heavily, her cheeks dusted red with exertion. Ayana! I throw newly, newly anxious at Ayana's rumpled state. Are you okay? I... Um, I find you... You don't need to worry. <sighs> Are you sure you don't need to sit down for a spell, do you? No, it's fine. I already got a, a, a most of my breath back. I now straight up then, glances about the summit of the mountain. The wind captures her hair, white strands fluttering about her shoulders like fringed buckskin. It is very pretty up here, isn't it? That's what I said. We're so high up, it feels like we could reach out and brush the sun with the tips of our fingers. I'm not sure if I would like that. It's hot enough as this. I wouldn't mind hugging a cloud for... I'm sure it would feel very soft and fluffy. Like you, you mean? 
I rub the top Fiona's head and she giggles. Your hair might be even more bubbled than the clouds are. I know it was in such a high demand. Neither did I. I always thought my hair was a curse. But one person's curse might be another person's treasure. It certainly netted you a nice treasure. I offer a grin. <laughs> now do you feel up to paying up uh, the witch a visit? Her home should be around here somewhere. If it really is here. Let's hope that merchant lady hasn't pulled a fast one on us. <laughs> I mean, technically she might have. Huh? I have faith in her. She seemed to earnest a person tell lies like that. I'm sure we'll find the witch in due course. You have so much faith in people, Ayana. You did such a sweetheart. Now we recovered from our trek. More or less, the pair of us searched for the witch's home. It doesn't like luck for Ayana and I to stumble upon a single solitary hut, shrouded by tall pine trees. It looks like an ordinary wood hut, but it exudes an ominous air. I feel instinctively that I ought to keep my distance. But I refuse to back down now. Let's get going! I, I crack my knuckles together. I'm not sure if it could be here. It could be heard. Uh, because I did it from the behind the mic. Anyway. We didn't wander through the woods so we could stand here gobbing. Besides. I shoot Ayana a sideways glance. Plus you look like you could do with some rest. Huh. I'm totally fine. I'm not sure about that. Your face is on certain beat. I think you need to lie down, hence you might really collapse. That which must have a chair or a di divan you can rest on. We'll know once we go inside. That's a nice, uh, that's a nice and small house actually. I skip to the entrance of the hut, then wrap onto the door. I am meanwhile deters behind me. I mean, I'm not complaining. Listen, if I could change apartment. For a smaller house? Yes. Definitely would go for it. Listen, I would love to have some kind of uh, like green area around the house basically, okay? And... Thanks to that also would love to have some area for the dog to run around freely, right? What we'll do if she's a wicked witch, she might turn us into toads. Then I'll jump inside her cleavage and bite her! Okay, that's not a bad idea. You, you can't bite a witch! I can do what I want, I won't let some old lady boss me around. Besides, if she's anything like the witches I've heard about, she'll be a withered old lady with a hook nose and a head like a prune. And we all know we don't want to run into those. We want the cute ones. I bet she looks like my grandma. There is no way I'd be afraid of somebody like that. You're not afraid of anything. You and I both know that isn't the case. I worry a lot about all kinds of things. I worry about my parents. I worry about Coco. But most of all, I worry about you. <gasps> Me? I not. I'm going to stay by your side no matter what. You don't need to worry about me uh, being turned to a toad. Ow. I'll protect you no matter what that rotten smelly old witch does. <laughs> I mean, you don't know if she's like that. The house looks nice. She can be like that. That's very sweet of you. But maybe you shouldn't call the witch smelly. She might get offended. I am a pauses. Assuming, of course, she's actually inside the hut. If she isn't there, we'll just sit our butts down, wait for her to come back. It's as simple as that. <laughs> I rap on the door again, more loudly this time, but there's still no response. That wasn't very... Can we hear it again? Give me a second, let's go into... Preferences. 
Dude, no, no wonder it's so loud for me. <laughs> that wasn't a very loud rapping on the door. I frown. Hmm. Maybe surely, <clears throat> maybe surely isn't it like Ayana said. Or maybe this is some sort of trial. I'll give it another go, just in case. Hey witch, if you're in there, give us a sign. My friend and I traveled really far to find you. We're tired and we'd like to sit down. Open this door right now. If you don't, I'll spit in your eye. I command you to... <gasps> My eyes should open with alarm. As of a sudden, the door of heart swings inwards. Left with nothing to support my wave, I stumble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's out trying to catch me, but she's not quick enough. I fall, shearing through the air, then collapse on the ground. Gee, that smarts, damn it. I wince. What's the big idea? I wrote it all. Which? I lift my head. And the moment I do, my voice tapers away. Uh, hello? <laughs> there is somebody in the wooden hut after all. It's a one reclining upon a stack of plush, wine, red cushions. I'm sure she must be the witch Maya? But she doesn't look like I imagined. Her hair is a pale lilac color and her golden eyes are half lidded like cats. She isn't wearing enough ornaments that she might be confused for a princess, but it's enough to mark her out from a common villager. She isn't a normal human. She's something far beyond that, and she wants everybody who meets her to know it too. She really, she really does make quite an impression, Chiffy, because... She's so beautiful! She's so eerie! Dude! Is she eerie? Let's have a look. Guys, what do you think? Is she eerie? Maybe, but she's also beautiful, so... <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a person more attractive in life. Uh, let's not go that far. It's quite overwhelming, really. How am I supposed to address her? I'm drawing a blank here. Oh my... My looks down at me, her lower lip curling. That isn't the most dignified, dignified of entrances, is it? I believe you said, while you were hammering upon my door, very rudely, I might add, that you would spit in my eye if I did not let you inside my abode. What a graceless lump of a girl you are. Oh, why you? I grit my teeth together. I've known Maya for only a brief handful of seconds, but her aloof mannerisms are making my blood boil. I get to my feet and take a step forth, meeting her eyes with my own. <clears throat> It's your fault I fell down, and it's because you opened the door so suddenly. Are you going to apologize? No. Why would I do such a silly thing? Do humans apologize when they happen to step on ants or swat flies? I don't think so. F Fours are completely different matters, you idiot. Yeah, yeah. I know you calling this witch an idiot is a good idea. I call her whatever I want. She's trying to make a fool out of us. Technically only on you, but... It took us a long time to find her and this is the greeting we get. She could stand to be a little nicer. How fiery you are. Most visitors aware of my immense power grovel and scrape in fear before me. But you are rather intriguing. I don't dislike it. Artless for you may be, you're quite the fun little girl. And now that I can see you properly, you are into it all bad on the eyes. I see. I'd not make a mistake in admitting you to home. To my home, after all. I'm very fond of pretty girls, you see. <laughs> my aunt's laughter fills her heart. It's even denser than the pun of an aromatic spices which hang in the air and I shudder. I'm not a little girl, and my appearance is neither here nor there. I'd not come here to be one of your playthings. I'm Yaya, I'm Mrs. Ayana. We sought you out because we have a request to make. It's very, very important, and you will listen to us. Oh, I will, will I? My eyes flashed. 
And if I refuse, what will you do then, my pretty little thing? Will you start to cry? Of course not. I harumph. <laughs> you what? My arms folded. I feel like you're not taking me seriously. My apologies, my little doe. Irreverence is in my way. Life becomes very dull and trite when one dispenses with levity, and I've been alive for a long time. I must find ways to entertain myself, else I would go mad. Well, even if you've been alive for a very long time, I'm glad your looks did not go into the wrong direction. So you are basically not a hug. If I have not already, that is. <laughs> I can't with that creepy laugh. I actually like doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I try to suppress there to shudder. I don't want to give this witch the satisfaction of knowing how unsettled she makes me. Her vibrant eyes really are unnerving. How old are you anyway? I've heard rumors that witches can live far longer than ordinary humans can using their magical knowledge, but Maya doesn't seem much older than Ayana or I. If I had to give her an age, I'd put her in her 20s. About 28 or so. Oh, she's my age. Nice! Yeah, yeah, give me the address. <laughs> now, now. Maya titters. Did your mother never teach you this route? To inquire about ladies' age? It is something I'm rather sensitive about. Does it mean you're an old hog then? Yeah, yeah. You can't say something like that. We came here to ask for Maya's help. So we should be polite. Insulting insulting her will get us nowhere. Please don't make her our enemy. Think of Coco. I'm not used to Ayana's being so forcefully, and it catches me off guard. I dip my head suitably chastised and scratch my cheek with my index finger. Oh yeah. <laughs> I guess you're right about that. Sorry, Anna. I must have let my temper get the better of me. I've tried to calm down, but I'm a bit surprised. I didn't think you'd put me in my place. You're usually so quiet. I know I'm quiet, um, but I thought I had to speak up about this. It is important to remember our one's manners, even when, or especially when, one is dealing with witches. We are her guests, after all. Well, well, well. Maya's smile grows wider and wider. It seems your little friend can keep a cool head at least. I'm glad she was able to talk sense into you. For I fear. At the same token, it is somewhat anticlimactic. I would have liked to torment you further. Yeah, yeah. Your reactions are most amusing. I seem to let you roll me up. Ice cold. I won't follow you for your provocations again. I'm not that dumb. Meaning you are somewhat dumb? <laughs> That's not what I said. It is what you implied. Maya giggles. Ah, godness me. For all uh, for all you grandiloquent talk. You are? Okay. You are awful easy to tease. Your flustered angry face is even more delectable than these grapes. You know what? I actually prefer the purple grapes over the green ones. And I don't know why, but it's apparently weird in my area that it's like that. Like everyone prefers the green ones for some reason. Well, the purple ones are better. Anyway, but if we continue this manner, we shall be here all day and nothing shall be done. In the interest of ushering things along, I'll try to behave myself. For now. <laughs> I shiver. My style of speech is horribly condescending. And she's looking at me like I'm a clod of dirt or, or a pebble. She makes me feel like I'm worth nothing. No, no. Less than that. She isn't doing anything safe, reclining at digging grapes, but everything about her feels antagonistic. I don't trust her, but I need her help. I can't afford to screw this up. Now then, your name is Ayana, correct? 
That's right, Miss Witch. And you are Yaya's friend? Yes, we're friends, just we're friends. Really? How lovely. You must be very close. I'm envious of re your relationship. <laughs> I have nobody I can call a childhood friend. Same. All those I knew from my youth have long since left this place, or else have passed away. I have been left all on my lonesome. Gee, I wonder why. But you did not come here to learn about me. My past is irrelevant. As the pair of you were kind enough to offer me your names. Not that I did not know them already, of course. I should return the favor. My name is Maya. For it seems you already know, are aware of that. Mm. It is a pleasure to meet you. Maya plucks her grape from the bunch in her hand and pops it in her mouth. Her teeth sink in the skin of the grape. The fruit explodes in her mouth. And some of the juice trickles down her lips. Green Maya trails her tongue against her lower lip. Mmm. Delicious. I haven't eaten anything since breakfast, which suddenly feels like quite a long time ago. My stomach starts rumbling, which of course alerts Maya's attention. Oh. Maya raises an eyebrow. Hungry are you? <sighs> My cheeks burn bright red. I know I shouldn't be so embarrassed about being hungry. Hungry is normal human state. It's just... Maya, dressed in her gold ornaments and reclining on her patterned divan, is completely unlike any human I've ever met before. My rumbling stomach almost feels like I'm admitting a weakness to her. I'm fine, totally fine. You don't need to worry about me. Uh... Maya pressed her lips together. You're a stubborn and prideful as well as quick-tempered, I see. What a charming combination of traits. I'm sure, with just a bit of prodding, I could make you explode most spectacularly. But it would be a waste to do that before I have heard your tale. Could you tell me, please, why you came here? Does, does that mean you're willing to help us? Not necessarily. I have not yet decided. First, I should listen to your tale. If it is suitably amusing, I may choose to offer my aid. I will not guarantee anything for... I'm under no obligation to make your wishes come true. Huh? I scowl. After the huge pain the years it was to get here, you might as well give us a freebie. That entirely depends on whether your story can move my heart. It was brave for you to venture the forest to find me, but I do not owe you anything. Now tell me why you're here. Give me your story. Embellish it as much as you will. To tuck upon my withered old heart strings. I do so love a tragedy. <laughs> Alright then. <clears throat> and that clears her throat. Then commences in the telling of our tale. We are not skipping past that. <laughs> we know that. When the Yaya. <clears throat> when Yaya. When Yaya and I were young, we were friends with a girl called Coco. We grew up together and we were inseparable. Until disaster struck. I now realize our take to Maya, who listened quietly. Once she finished the witch notes, her expression ponder ponderous. So, you came here hoping I could aid you in your search for your missing friends. Is that right? I know not. I see. Hmm. Ah, your motives are poor and selfless, and your tale is not at all dull. I would not mind helping you. But before that, you must pay me sufficient tribute. My services do not come cheap, you see. I'm in high demand. People all across the country seek me out, hoping I can use my magic to solve their petty problems. That is why I hid myself away in this humble hut deep in the woods. I thought it would be deter people from bothering me. But this was wishful thinking on my part. For a hermit, I'm awfully <laughs> I'm awfully famous <laughs> for a hermit. <laughs> I'm inundated with requests, and as such, I do not deign to offer my services for free. I have no need for exposure, and I do not wish to cheapen my brand. Uh. I pull the face. 
I guess that necklace might com might come in handy. I thought you were a witch, not a business woman. I'm both. I am an entrepreneurial woman, and I could not abide being placed in a neat little box. Yet you hid yourself away in the woods of your own free will in this tiny hut. I do not mind being pinned down, if it is on my own will, but I shall not let others do the same. I'm very headstrong, as you should be able to see. <laughs> I figure just contrary. <sighs> I sigh. I guess it was stupid I expected you want to help us out of the goodness of your hearts. You don't seem to have heart at all. <laughs> now that is simply not true. I do have a heart. Else I would not be able to speak to you. Makes sense. For whether it is still pumps blood is another matter. I have grown old and cynical. Sometimes I wonder whether I'm not stuck with sawdust. My green is eerily. <laughs> but enough talk. What do you girls offer me in return for my aid? I warn you, I do not come in cheap. I'm accustomed to luxury. And I desire only the best. Uh. My apologies. But we do not have much to offer you. All I have is my hair. I would be willing to part with it if you desire it. Your hair? Hmm. My rise is from her chair. That can't be comfortable, man. Then she approaches Ayana. She circles her, taking a few strands of her silver hair between her fingers and rubs it, like a merchant appraising the value of a horse. It is very lovely indeed. It caught me eye the moment you entered the humble abode of mine. It is so white it looks like snow. You, you know what snow looks like? I know what many, many things look like, from tempest tossed oceans to high ceilings, palaces heavy with jewels. I've traveled the world and seen more than little girls could ever dream of. That's incredible. And exhales her blue eyes, big with a purple eyes. <laughs> you and I lived in our village for most of our lives. We probably would have stayed there if Cog had not gone missing. This is the first time we've ever ventured so far. I have heard of snow, but never seen it. And I have never seen the ocean there, or the play palaces. Perhaps I will show you one one day, if the mood strikes me. My smiles still toying with Aina's abundant white locks. Alas, I don't think your hair would be suitable trait for my magic. Unusual for your tresses are. It grows from your scalp at no cost to you. I prefer gold. And jewels to handmade, or in this case, homegrown presents. My tastes, as I believe I mentioned, are expensive. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. And above her head. You have something <coughs> on your neck. <coughs> on your neck. I have precious little to offer you, other than my hair. Really now? My smile is thinly. What about the necklace about your neck hidden beneath your clothes? That seems a fine trinket indeed. I would very much like to take a look at it. <gasps> what? Ayana stares at my stunned. You know about my necklace? I am a witch, my dear. It is my duty to know things even I cannot see them. Even if I cannot see them. The necklace of yours which you are hiding like a squirrel does his chestnuts is very enticing indeed. I can hear it calling to me. Through the folds of your fabric fabric. Its magical energy resonates strongly with my own. It must be enchanted. <gasps> That's right! I'm... Anna pulls the necklace out from beneath her clothes. Then unties the clasp at the back. She holds the chunky piece aloft for Maya's inspection. Its thick golden chain wrapped about her fingers. Yeah, and I ran to emerge in the woods. She said she would take this necklace for my hair. I'm not sure why, but she seemed very taken with it. A merchant, hmm? My ponders one hand beneath her chin. Would the merchant have green hair, perchance, and a pair of bright shiny eyes? Yeah, yeah, she did. She said her name was Mika, and that she knew where you lived. It was she who pointed us in the direction to her home. She said you were friends? Friends? 
is putting quite a generous spin on it. I do not care to have friends, least of all other jetting girls like Mika, I find her com company quite tiresome. I have made this apparent to her numerous times, but she seems to not have not to have received a hint. I would be happier if she let me be. But I can forgive her impertinence on account of her wares. She does tend to have a lot of lovely trinkets in her possession. So this necklace is one of her wares. My text necklace from Bayana's proffered fingers and turns it over, her expression thoughtful. Hmm. I wonder why I did not notice it when she paid me a visit earlier today. I suppose I was also so busy trying to get her to leave my home, I failed to regard it. That was quite the oversight on my part. But now I can see this necklace up close. I can see it, no ordinary bubble. It possesses some rather incredible powers. So incredible, I wonder how Mika was able to get her hands upon it. Is it dangerous? It can be, if it is in the wrong hands. I think it would be for the best if I took care of it for you. Dear, I would not want you to hurt yourself. <laughs> hey, wait! I begin. I, I begin? I begin? I begin what? I begin, but Maya doesn't listen to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Impervious to my cries, she waves her free hand in front of that witch clasps the necklace. When she draws her fingers away, the necklace has gone. What did she do with it? She must have made it invisible, her magic or else banished to some realm unreachable by mundane humans like me. How could you? I glared at the witch, my fingers clenched to fists. That necklace belongs to Ayana. She dirty her own hair for it, fair and square. I never even said you could have it, you thief. Perhaps she did not. But I'm sure she does not mind. You care more about finding your missing friend than you do... Uh, when you do a uh, free parry, don't you? You do not strike me as the vain sort. I did rather like that necklace, but... In a size. <sighs> I suppose you are right, I have no need for it. Finding Coco is my top priority. Well spoken, what a loyal friend you are. Maya beams, then pats I on the head. It's much the same manner I often do. <laughs> <laughs> this too makes me blower. I don't like seeing Maya act so very familiar with Ayana. It makes me feel uneasy. Now don't scold so, Miss Warrior. I have secured your friend's consent. She does not care about her necklace half as much as you seem to think. And even if she did, you have no reason to worry. I'm no thief. I will return this necklace to you in due course, once I have studied it. I think it will do very well as a down payment. But it is not quite enough. What? Huh? You want even more from us? Why would you expect anything else? I'm witch. Taking is our want. We really don't have anything to give. We are poor, like I said. We only have the clothes up on our backs and a few coins in our pouches. <laughs> that is true enough, yes. But there is more still you can give me. Those bodies of yours, for example. Not humbling. My smiles wickedly. They are very fine indeed. I would be a very happy woman if I could claim them for myself. In only for a few brief moments. What are you talking about? I step away from my and wind my arms around my middle. My body is not for sale. I'm not cheap. Neither am I. Now why don't you girls stay here for a few days? Say, serve me as best as you can and indulge in my every wish and whim. Then I might just find the motivation to help you. I'll warn you for that I can be very, very demanding. There is a chance I might just wear you out. <laughs> that witch. Is freaking dangerous. I mean, she definitely is. Uh, yeah. I hope this will not end badly for us. I hope this will not end badly for us. I hope you're up to the challenge. <laughs> my laughter fills the air. It's so heavy, it's almost palpable. My skin prickles, and my whole body trembles. What does she mean? She might wear us out. What does she want us to do? I'm starting to visualize all sorts of wild scenarios, and her weird laughter isn't helping. 
That's no ritual! She's trying to take advantage of you, Ayana! I dash over to Ayana and take her shoulders in my hands. I thought I would look after you, but I can't do that if you go off with that awful woman! Don't let her manipulate you! Huh? What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about! Ow! The rope! The chocolate! The... 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 Oh, the moaning! Moaning? I now froze her bro. I'm not, I'm not moaning. I, I'm just standing here. Yes, indeed. You're acting very oddly, little warrior girl. My attitudes. What, pray tell, were you imagining? All the awful the brave things I know you want to do to my friend. You sicken me, you harlot. I'm not ashamed of my body, no. But I do not understand why you would dab me a harlot when I have done nothing to your dear friend. Maybe not, but you are planning on it. You said you were going to wear us out. Those were your exact words. I bet you want to do all sorts of things for bunnies like this and that and that. I couldn't deny. I have pondered the idea. It is no secret that I enjoy the company of attractive girls. Ha! I knew it! But... My agreeance. When I said I would wear you out, I was not referring to anything salacious. I was going to send a pair of you to the river to catch us some fish so that we may cook and, and eat them. I'm hungry, and I'm sure you are too. Fishing is one onerous task, and can be exhausting, but I'm sure you are up for the task. Hmm, right. So that's what you meant. That is indeed what I meant. My giggles. What do you think I meant? Uh, uh, it really isn't that important. I was being stupid. <laughs> Now, why not we get going, Guyana? I'm pretty hungry and these fish won't catch themselves. Won't tell me what you were thinking? Maybe later. More like never. Why did my mind have to go to such a weird place? There must be something wrong with me. Gee, I'm such a mess. Well, I guess we'll go fishing in the next episode. For now, let's end it here. I'm going to bed. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you have a wonderful day. Feel free if you lasted until the very end. If you enjoyed it, to uh, subscribe if you are not yet. And maybe also go to my other socials from the, uh, from the description directly. Anyway, have a wonderful day. And I'll see you tomorrow in more, in more of Sankra Forest Girls. Bye-bye.